needless to say, needless to say, uh, Jalbay has been a significant contributor, not only to the whole North American community, Zoroastrian community, but significantly to NAMC. Uh, as I mentioned to you the last time, uh, Jalbay is training two of our kids to become Mabeds. That takes countless hours of training. And he is doing it uh, freely. And the kids who he, he is working with enjoy working with him. So Jalbe, please continue to serve our community and a million thanks from us. Come here, unmute Karo Parsa. Jalbe, you are. Uh, okay, okay. Now, can you hear me? Can you hear me or not? Haji. Yes, Haji. Okay, you so can shall hear I me. start now? Haji. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Uh, okay, so my distinguished fellow Mabed Sahes, Mabed Yars, scholars, and all the participants who have joined in, thank you for attending the presentation of Does Zoroastrianism Have a Concept of Reincarnation? So I have endeavored this reincarnation subject from a religious, rational, and logical point of view. I'm presenting my views based on my research. It's entirely up to the participants to accept or reject that there is or there is not the reincarnation concept in Zoroastrianism. Before I proceed with the presentation, I would like to mention that the reincarnation is a contentious and controversial subject among the Zoroastrians. However, in order to understand the concept of reincarnation, it is important to first review some of the scriptures and doctrines of Zoroastrianism. Uh, normally, the references are given at the end. I always prefer to give it up front so that the viewers have an idea of the material that I have searched. Uh, so I have heavily depended, depended on Yasna chapters, Amin Dhala, History of Zoroastrianism, Iraj Taraparwala, The Divine Songs of Zarthustra, Firoz Tavarya, Shnuman Manual, Karshad Bhavnagri, The Laws of the Spiritual World, Edward Dr. Ramya Karanjya, The Bhagavad Gita, Paramahansa Yogananda, and Encyclopedia Britannica. So let's look at what's religion. Religion is the belief in a God. Many people turn to religion for comfort in time of crisis. Religion is an organized system of beliefs, ceremonies, rituals, and rules used to worship God. There are many religions such as Zoroastrianism, Hinduism, Judaism, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, etc. Many of us think that the scriptures only can tell us the will of God, but we must also experience it with knowledge within ourselves. Is religion a pathway to an intellectual dead end or is it a pathway to the discovery of the soul and the need of the soul to fulfill its mission and destiny in the world, in service to humanity, to the world, and service to God? So let's look at the dual, uh, dualistic doctrine of Sarasanism. The universe is sustained by the continuing interactions of the two opposing forces, the positive we call Spenta and the negative called Angra Manus, of all nature according to Yasna 30.3.6 and Yasna 40.5. And uh, maybe I may not repeat to save time, I may not keep repeat, uh, uh, repeating the Yasna numbers, but you will be able to see. Scientifically speaking, speaking it is known as the laws of polarity. So what are the laws of polarity? The law of polarity is the principle that everything has two opposing poles, good and evil, love and hate, attraction, repulsion, dark and light, hot and cold, neutron and proton, positive, negative, male, female, north and south pole, everything in the universe has the opposite. Spenta menu is beneficent. It chooses truth, light and life protects and maintains many realms and creatures, the sky, water, earth, plants, and also the souls yet to be born. 
Spentamani is the Holy Spirit created by the wise Lord of Ramazda to oppose the destructive spirit Angramanyu. Spentamani is an aspect of the wise Lord himself. Our Ramazda creates life and goodness through the Holy Spirit Spentamani. It is mentioned 15 times in the Gathas. This time I will just read this 28, uh, 33. Yes, now 43, 2, 3, 6, and 16. Yes, now 40, 47, uh, 45, 6, 47, 1 to 6, and 51, 7. Also, it is mentioned twice in Gata Haptangaiti, which is yes, now 36, 1 and 2. Angra Mainyu is the absolute opposite of Spenta. The two are quite apart. Neither their thoughts, wills, words, teachings, beliefs, and deeds are in harmony their inner selves are and souls are far apart. Angramanyu is de decreasing, destructive, chaotic and evil, druj, deva and a common spirit. It's harmful, deceitful, false, lies and confuses our mind, nurtures falsehood, creates inequity, arrogance, greed, red, jealousy, envy, hatred, cunningness, trickery, vindictiveness, vindictiveness, cruelty, malice, backbiting, gossiping, selfishness, meanness, vice and wickedness, and to create misery for humans. So there are two kinds of dualistic uh, uh, doctrines in Zoroastrianism. One is a cosmically opposing forces within the universe. The other is the morally opposing forces within the human mind. Cosmic dualism refers to the ongoing battle between the good and the evil within the universe. Angramanyu is destructive spirit energy that opposes Avramazda's creative energy. So let's look at cosmic dualism. As with the cosmic dualism, we have the polarity of happiness and sadness, truth and deception, and so on, but with an emphasis on choice. This choice is crucial as it determines whether we are the helper of our Mazda or the helper of Angra Mainyo. When all of humanity chooses the former or the latter, evil will finally be defeated and will realize the paradise on earth. So moral dualism is a process of prioritizing what will keep us closer to God. It refers to the opposition of good and evil in the human mind. God's gift to us is our free will to choose with our Vahumana, the good mind. We have the choice either to follow the immoral path of evil, druj and deceit, or the moral path of righteousness, or show and truth. The path of evil will lead us to misery and ultimately to hell. The path of righteousness leads to peace and everlasting happiness in heaven. So let's look at the free will and choice now. God has given us intellect good mind and free will to choose between right and wrong, conscious and divine law, Daina, and good Fravashi, the guardian spirit. We have the responsibility to choose wisely our thoughts, words, and actions with our Vahumana, known as Vahishtamana. The opposite of it is called Akamana, the worst or evil mind, also known as Achistamana, uh, as uh, mentioned in Yasna 32, 3, 4, and 47, 5. Duality exists as part of manifestation, but we have free will to choose between the dual existence. Spenta Mainyu, the bountiful spirit, promotes the realization of Asha. Angra Mainyu, the destructive spirit, defies Asha. And we have the choice between them, between spirit and matter, between real and the unreal. Zatusta taught us to resist evil. We are created to resist and defeat evil in all its manifestation. We share our Mazda's work in eradicating Angra Mainyu. There's a continuous struggle between the forces of light and forces of evil, the forces of darkness. One is a creator, the other is a destroyer. When we practice the path of Asha, the good forces will win. So let's look at some of the good choices. We must choose to practice good habits, such as love and compassion, temperance, self-control, integrity, truth, honesty, forgiveness, happiness, kindness, charity, selfless service, faith, to be humble, respectful, spirituality, meditation, and soul consciousness. 
in short, essentially to align our soul with Asha. All our thoughts, words, and actions emits energy and frequency to the universe. And that energy and frequency returns to the origin back to us. So if we practice negativity, bad thoughts, words, and deeds, it will all come back to us as a pain, suffering, misery, etc. That's why it is so important to take care of the quality of our thoughts, words, and actions. Let's look at what are the bad choices that are the sins. We must choose to avoid bad habits such as greed, lust, anger, vengeance, grief, cruelty, selfishness, jealousy, fear, doubt, pride, egoist, material desire, sensory perception, negativity, smoking, excessive consumption of drug and alcohol, emotional blackmail, etc. There are murder junkies, according to our religion, which is atheism, disobedience to parents and masters, sorcery, throwing nasu, putrid things into water, in fire, and bury the sin, committing adultery, abortion, and execution of such other negative sins and actions causes the departed soul to take the rebirth, according to Patit Pashimani Kardatri and Shuman Manual by P. N. Tavaria. So let's look at what is law of Asha. The law of Asha is the origin of happiness and heaven. By not following Asha, it brings misery and hell. Those who walk on the path of truth and righteousness, happiness comes to them. And those who don't walk on path of Asha, misery comes to them. God is loving. He never punishes and hurls the souls into hell for eternal condemnation. The greatest good in life is goodness itself, which brings happiness. Zathustra taught us, Happiness to him who gives happiness to others, according to the Shambhavu. So let's look at now what is soul or urvan. So the soul is our personality, who we are. With our soul, we think, reason, consider, remember, and wonder. We experience emotions like happiness, love, sorrow, anger, relief and compassion, and we are able to resolve, choose and make decisions. Soul is the spiritual or Im immaterial part of living things. It is our moral or emotional nature or sense of identity. Our soul suffers when we don't nourish it by integrating a spiritual component into our lives and striving to give our lives meaning and purpose. Soul is the spirit and essence of a person an entity which is immortal and spiritual part of a person and has no physical material reality. It's credited with the function of thinking, willing, choosing, reason, character, feeling, consciousness, essential qualities, memory, perception, thinking, etc. Urvan is the nature of every human, is the decision maker because it controls the body and is responsible for all the decisions and actions done by the human in this world, by their choice. The soul is the part of us that God created, that's permanent and that existed before this life and will continue beyond this life. Our soul provides us with a kind of inner voice, a moral compass and directions. It acts as a link between the material body and the spiritual self, and therefore shares some characteristics of the both. In Hormuz Kodayan Saros Baj, when we pray, also there is a mention of the body, soul, and the physical and the spiritual world. When we pray, Tani Ravani Keti Mino Ani, meaning my body and soul of this world and of the next world. So let's look at the Fravashi now. It's the essence of God that guides us. The fravashi of an individual sends out the urvan into the material world to fight the battle of good versus evil. On the morning of the fourth day after death, the urvan is imagined to return to its fravashi, where its experiences in the material world are coll collected to assist the next generation in their fight between good and evil. The Avasta states that the fravashis of every human being has three periods of existence, namely, fravashyo zantam, fravashis of the unborn, fravashyo zavantam, fravashis of the living, and 
Fravashyo Iriritu Sam, which is the Fravashyo of the dead, according to Yasna 26 and Kardla of Stone. In Kaushya and Mehanyas, our soul and Fravashyas are also invoked separately as follows. Om Urvanim Yasmaide, Om Fravashim Yasmaide, we revere our soul, we revere our Fravashi. Fravadin Yas mentions Urvan as Fravashi as two separate entity also as follows. Aunim cha, denam cha, bodas cha, urvanim cha, fravashim cha, yezumayde. We revere life, conscience, intelligence, soul, and fravashi. So let's look at journey of soul after that. Now that we have already covered and discussed the core teachings of our religion, the Spenta and the Angra menu, dualistic doctrine, free will and choice, souls, and Fravashi, etc. Now let's look at what really happens to the soul after death. Upon death, the Urvan and Fravashi are separated from the Tanu, the body, which is disposed of. The pure and perfect Fravashi returns to the celestial abode. The soul remembers all the past deed and is, in sad, is sad and worried. This is the reason during Four days of prayers, the Sarosh Yazata is invoked to calm the soul, to guide and assist and protect the souls from evil. The Tibetan Book of Dead also describes that the prayers of the deceased person are actually addressed to that person's disembodied consciousness, the soul, to help him or her navigate through confusing or frightening visions created by his or her own consciousness a consciousness that goes beyond the body eventually towards the further incarnations. All souls after that have to cross the Chinvat bridge of judgment. It is mentioned in Yasna 19.6 as Trishchittaro Peretum. Yasna 46.10 says, Vispais Chinvato Frafra Peretum. 46.11, Yatha Chinvato Peretush. 51.13, Kraudaiti Chinvato Pereta Akao. Yesna 71.16, Urvanem Toro Chinvato Peretum, and also mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, 19.5 uh, in Bandila. According to our scriptures, after death on the dawn of the third night, the departed soul appears at the Chinvat bridge. The soul gets the judgment rendered by Saroshya, Rashno, and Mahariasatha, also known as Mahadavar, who guards the bridge. <clears throat> All souls must cross the Chinat bridge to go to paradise. They succeed in crossing it only if they are Ashavan souls, the faithful followers of Asha, truth and order, the fundamental principle, principle of religion. If they are souls of the Dregwant, the followers of Druj, they will go to hell. <clears throat> Excuse me. Meher Yazad with the actions of the soul performed during its life on earth. And if the good deeds outweigh the evil ones, then the soul is allowed to cross the bridge and reward it with Vahishta Ahu, the best life of heaven. According to our religion, if the soul's good, good deeds are equal to the bad deeds, the soul goes to what is called as Hamistagan or purgatory the discarnate bad souls, the evil souls of the sinners, which due to their gross wickedness are not able to proceed further, stop at the threshold of the chamber, the bridge of selection, and either send to hell or return to the region of lie, which is the earth. This is to take birth again, according to Yasna 46, 10, 11, and 51, 13. In the Buddhahishan's creation myth, there is a mention of the legend in which the Urvans are given a choice of either remaining in heaven protected with our Mazda or being born mort a mortal on earth. This gives them the opportunity to pay up their karma and evolve further by helping to bring about the defeat of Angramanya. If they will this outweighs the good ones, then the soul is not allowed to cross the bridge and it is cast into Achista Ahu, the worst existence or the hell. The soul of wicked must suffer till the last day of the great gathering, 
when everybody will be judged, the evil will be eradicated and the battle between good and evil will end, which we call Frasokarati. So let's look at what Frasokarati is. Frasokarati suggests making wonderful, excellent, exceptional, etc. According to the Zoroastrian doctrine, a final renovation of the universe when evil will be destroyed and everything else will then be in perfect unity with God or Ramazda. So Rastinism teaches that mankind is ultimately good and that this goodness will finally triumph over evil. Personal salvation is attained through making the right choices. The salvation of the world, Frashokarati's restoration of the world to its perfect state when we collectively make the right choices in our lives, we are furthering the realization of the Frasokarati. The doctrine uh, of Frasokarati principles are as follows. Good will eventually prevail over evil. Creation was initially perfectly good, but, was subst but subsequently corrupted by evil. The world will ultimately be restored to the perfection it had at the time of creation. The salvation for the individual depended on the sum of individual thoughts, words, and deeds, and there could be no intervention, whether compassionate or capricious, by any divine being to alter this. Each human bears the responsibility for the fate of his or own soul, and same time shares in the responsibility for the fate of the world. So let's, let's look at it now. Why God created the humans? We say that there is a spark of God within us. God created us in his image to become more and more like him. He created our spirits and wants us to have the opportunity to gain divine nature to progress and become like him. The image of God imparts special meaning, harmony, intelligence, and design to human life. To be human is to be created in the image of God. God has created all human from the limitless joy of his being. God expects that souls made in his image shall ultimately rise above all sense identifications and reunite with him. In several passages of various prayers, it is mentioned that the bad souls have to come back to home of the untruth, the earth, which we saw. But also other passages about Chinwood Bridge says the bad souls will go to hell until the last day of the great gathering. When everybody will be judged, the evil will be eradicated and the, bit, uh, the, bit, the battle between good and evil will end. If the bad souls will go to hell until the last day of the great gathering, how can those souls have the opportunity to spiritually evolve, to be godlike and merge with him if they have no option to atone for their bad karma and make conscious efforts to become pure? So they mentioned to the <clears throat> eternal rendering them to the hell are for the, the souls that for life after life after life have never learned the lessons and have remained very evil. Those are the ones that don't have the options. So here is where the confusion and the misunderstanding comes in regarding the reincarnation. Until the resurrection and frashokarati, or the bad souls have no option and choice to repent, repay their karma and follow the path of asha to spiritually rise. That's where the consequences of the karma and reincarnation is applied. As per our scriptures, we have seen in the previous slides, the souls came to earth from the spiritual world. After the death, souls have to go through the judgment and receives, uh, receive the reward or punishment according to their good or bad karma. We saw that. So let's look at what the karma, the law of Kedar is called, or the actions. All acts and words shall bear fruits, evil to evil doors, akim akai, and good blessings to good. Vangohim Ashim Vangohave. The Vispahumata, it is in Vispahumata is mentioned that all evil thoughts, words, and deeds lead to hell. Vispadushmata, Vispadusukta, Vispadusvarsta, 
achistem anguhim ashayeta, and good blessings to the good ones. As mentioned in Gathas, all such inequities occur before the radiant eyes of Avra Mazda and are treated in accordance with the law of Asha. It just cannot be otherwise in a universe governed by the divine justice. So karma is based on the principle of cause and effect. Every action has equal and opposite reaction. We all know that. The cause is our thoughts, words, and actions, and the effect is the consequences of those actions. There are good karma and bad karma. Karma is that we owe or the blessings we will receive. Hence, bad karma is the root of rebirth, of reincarnation. As discussed in the previous slides, all of our actions have consequences. Some immediate, some delayed, or even in the future incarnations. So the doctrine of karma is not considered simply in relation to one lifetime, but also in relation to both the past incarnations and future lives. It is one's actions that determines the direction of one's life and future. An individual is free to choose his or her course of action and set their fate in motion. The consequences of each action are predetermined, but the choices of our actions are not. Hence, the fate of mankind is not predestined. Once the choice is made, good or bad, the direction of life, life is set. The consequence of an individual's thoughts, words, and deeds will follow in accordance with the law of Asha. This is God's wills and God's justice. Nothing can change the operation of the law of Asha. No mediation is possible. All thoughts, words, and actions generate its consequences. There can be no addition or subtraction of the consequences. Nothing can change it. Repentance alone cannot alter the course of justice either. Avastha recommends the character of certain types of behavior and norms of conduct. Some bad acts are strictly forbidden, excuse me, such as wrath, which is called Ayeshama, violence, Rama, falsehood, Dragwa, lie, Druj, are all evil acts, whereas honesty, Ashmanangaha, fulfillment of promises, Mitra, compassion, Marasdika, and charity, Ratha, are all acts of piety. The souls bound by karma go round and round in the cycle of existence. Whatever sufferings or pleasure that a soul may be experiencing in its present life is on account of choices that it has made in the present or in the past. There are several research of near-death experiences, which is called NDE, spiritual life after death and reincarnation, all researched and uh, confirmed by many doctors, psychologists, and scientists. There are many cases of young children who report uh, very specific details of an apparent past life, which are later verified by various scientists. The modern parapsych parapsychological uh, investigations show that all of our thoughts and emotions are recorded in our subconscious mind and can be recalled under hypnosis. Some example, examples researched and written by some of the following authors, and I have mentioned a few authors here. Dr. Raymond Moody Jr., a philosopher, psychiatrist, physician, and author, most widely known for his books about afterlife and near-death experiences, writes about reincarnation in one of his book, Life After Death. Dr. Michael Newton, PhD, holds a doctorate in counseling psychology, is a, is a certified master hypnotherapist and is a member of the American Counseling Association. He has also been on the faculty of higher educational institutions as a teacher. He talks about life after life and about spiritual world and reincarnation in his books, The Journey of Souls and A Life Between Lives. Dr. Master Jisheng Shaw is a Tao grandmaster, healer, teacher, and author of 30 books, including 11 New York Times bestsellers, one of its, <clears throat> it is, is soul communication. 
Tom Harper, a Canadian biblical columnist and broadcaster, an ordained Anglican priest, he mentions in his book, There is a Life After Death. Dr. Brian MD, a graduate of Columbia University and Yale Medical School. He's a chairman emeritus of the psychiatry at the Mount Sinai Medical Center in Miami, a groundbreaking psychiatrist and best-selling author of Many Lives, Many Masters. And finally, Korset Bhavnagri, in her book, Laws of Spiritual, Spiritual World, provides information about spirit world, soul's placement in various realms, depending on their karma and other information, including reasons of soul reincarnation, which was communicated by her dear departed soul Vispi through automatic writing and later through direct ESP communication. So the common element in all these books describes the consequence of karma and reincarnations. Soul bound by karma are sent back for a chance to change their bad deeds to repent, improve, and purify the soul to rise higher. Earth is a training institute where souls of people with bad karma should become good and evolve spiritually so they do not have to be reincarnate or to be reborn again. So what exactly is reincarnation? reincarnation? It simply means that we live one life and go into the other. It's all for the purpose of soul development and spiritual growth. Ultimate goal of the soul is to spiritually evolve to be with God Almighty. The soul may take the form of human or animal, depending on the moral quality of the previous lives and actions. Reincarnation is a philosophical or a religious concept that the non-physical essence of a living beings that begins a new life in a different physical form or body after each biological death as per their actions and spiritual evolution. Reincarnation is also called rebirth or transmigration, passing of soul from one body to another after death, etc. It's a belief that each soul returns repeatedly to the physical body to atone for past sins and develop its full potential for the ultimate reunion with the supreme force or energy of the universe, which we call God or the source. This belief is older than the recorded history and accepted by almost every other religion. It's the soul which reincarnates, bearing the responsibility of all thoughts, words and deeds done in the past life on earth. The purpose of rebirth is Ravan Bhaktagi, as we call, or Moksha Nirvana, or final liberation. The lords of karma assign one's destiny according to one's karmas, with absolute justice for each lifetime, carrying over the areas of past karmic accounts to the next lifetime. This doctrine of rebirth also applies to all mankind, regardless of their caste, beliefs, faith, or religion, because it's a cosmic law applicable to every soul. No matter what we believe or which religion we belong to, whether we believe in reincarnation or not, it is just like whether we believe in laws of gravity or not, it exists. Laws of re uh, reincarnation also exist. The nature of the reincarnation is beyond the understanding of the majority of the living just as an unborn fetus cannot understand the nature of the world outside the womb, we have difficulties to accept or, accept or understand the concept of reincarnation. God created everyone equal. So the moment one consider his or her religion or consider oneself superior to someone else's or one's race is superior to other, there is a flaw in our thinking. We all come to earth with different gifts for our own tasks, training and mission. So there is no question of being superior or inferior race or religion. In my opinion, just because we are Sorassians and there is no direct reference on the subject of reincarnation in our existing literatures, does not exempt us from the universal cosmic law of reincarnation. Whether we believe it or not, there is reincarnation and there is no eternal damnation of soul in hell either. 
this is Yesna 14 and 11, uh, this paragraph is a very important paragraph that describes the reincarnation. It goes like this. Atta dus kshatreng, dus shotna, dus shotreng, dus vachang ho, dus adaneng, dus manang ho, drigvato, akaish, kshaish, paiti urvano, paiti ayanti, drujo de mane haityanga henastio. This paragraph has a clear reference to the doctrine of reincarnation in Tara Parvala's Divine Song of Zarthustra, page 727, 730, 1129. So following is the word by word translation of that paragraph of 4911 I just recited. But among evil rulers, evil doers, evil speakers, among evil egos, evil thinkers, followers of untruth souls do come back urvano paiti yanti trujo by reasons of that dim insight truly they are dwellers in abode of untruth the abode of untruth is the earth so also on page 730 it is mentioned that many russian scholars have seen in these words the trujo demane clear reference to the doctrine of reincarnation. In 1980, Dr. Kurshet Dabu in his magazine Chera has concluded that Drujo Demane in 4911 clearly indicates the doctrine of reincarnation. It describes in the clearest and the most unequivocal terms, the phenomenon of rebirth in all its aspects as illustrated for the first time by Arsha Jatustra centuries ago, like Akaish Kshatrais Paiti Urvano Paiti Yainti, means souls do come back by reasons of their deem inside. The souls of evil rulers, evil doers, evil speakers, those with evil conscience, evil thinkers, and the followers of untruth do come back by reasons of the bad fruits of their evil Kedar. Truly, they are the dwellers of the regions of the lie the human environment on earth in which alone the lie can prevail. Sorry, I have to mention this. It is from Zand Akai's Iranian Bundesian and Pahelvi Prefresh Behram Gaur The discussion has been going on of, uh, on the subject of reincarnation for a very long time. But to my knowledge, at no time have any Zoroastrian religious leaders or scholars ever have disapproved the above mentioned translation of 4911 or that the translation is incorrect, whether etymologically, grammatically or otherwise. It's the soul which incarnates bearing the responsibility for all the thoughts, words and actions performed on earth. The main purpose of rebirth is Ravan Bhaktagi, the final liberation, according to Afrin Rapitwa. One's destiny is according to one's karma with absolute justice for each lifetime, carrying over the areas of past karmic accounts to the next lifetime. According to the Bundahishans, the law of gradual evolution is proclaimed loud and clear in our religion whereby the Urvan, the, our souls, of course, keeps descending from the Minoa, which is spiritual realm, to the Gethia, the physical, in order to gain knowledge gather experience, fight ignorance, temptation, and evil, and grow in wisdom after which to return to the abode of bliss. Afrin Rapitan Para 29 presents two alternatives for departed soul, the veterans, those who fulfill their purpose of birth and those who fail, according to the great scholar, Dr. Sarjeevan Chimodi. In the Pazan Dhup Sarna prayer, the concluding prayer says, may the departed soul return, may I am, the word is, to our Mazdeyasna religion once again. In the Pazan language, the term Tanepasin means the last bodily existence. Last means several previous births in the body. This term signifies the last incarnation of an evolved soul at the end of which liberation, the Ravan Bhaktagi or Moksha, is achieved. 
God created, created us in his image to become more and more like him. He created our spirits and wants us to have the opportunity to gain divine nature, to progress and become godlike in order to merge with him. For which we need certain training and experiences that can only be received on earth. We can spiritually evolve in one lifetime. We, so my apologies, we cannot spiritually evolve in one, one lifetime to become uh, like God. According to Dr. Fernandez Chinivala, the law of rebirth is a universal cosmic law which aims at giving the utmost scope for the fullest development of the soul by repeated experiences in the physical realm. The aim of life is spiritual perfection, and this perfection simply cannot be achieved in a single lifetime. Every soul achieves perfection at its own speed of evolution. Hence, different persons have different circumstances, challenges, opportunities, joys, sorrows, different relationships, and different spans of lifetime in which to learn cosmic lessons acquire wisdom, and be finally reunited with the divine flame. For example, physically challenged or mentally ill are noble souls, but suffers throughout life. They are souls going through the learning process. One person is born into a royal family, the other in, in Islam. In both cases, is the past accumulated karma of the souls being born by its choice resulting in birth of the particular circumstances through particular parents in accordance with the law of cause and effect. So I just want to mention here that whatever that we go through the life now is in the spiritual life before coming, we chose that. <clears throat> if we miss the opportunity to learn and improve from our challenges, difficulties and problems, we will discover, we experience the same type of problem over and over again until we learn the loving lessons that are being presented to us. Though the life experience often feels otherwise, these lessons are always positive and are always for our growth and fulfillment to higher levels. So why there is no clear reference to the doctrines of reincarnation in our uh, scriptures? Although there are no clear references on the doctrine of reincarnation in our existing scriptures, there are various passages in different scriptures, as mentioned in previous slides, that gives the information on soul's judgment based on their karma. They will reincarnate in order to repay the bad karma, undergo trace training, and gain experience for the growth of their soul. In my opinion, the reasons there is no clear reference of the doctrine of reincarnation in our scripture is because most of our original scriptures have been lost due to the destructive invaders such as Alexander, the Islamic Arabs, and the Mongols. Hence, some of the information in some scriptures on the subject of reincarnation may also have been destroyed. And as I had uh, discussed during one Vanidhar prayer, that there were 21 nurses uh, based on 21 words of Yatahu Verio, and only one survives now, and most of them are dis uh, destroyed. So I st strongly believe that there must have been some literature in some of the scripts about reincarnation. So Zarathustra's message to humanity was to follow the path of Asha. The path of perfection, the consequences of following the path of Asha creates good karma. Zarathustra expected all of his followers to live their life on the principle of Asha to reach the Garatman base. And if everybody follows the path of Asha, there is no bad karma, and therefore there is no reaction, no reincarnation required. Sartustra wanted mankind to achieve perfection and immortality. It states, Hyat ami urvas, urvas, os, urvas to, os to. It is possible to attain this goal within one single life upon earth because Salvation is attained during this earthly life. Even though we cannot find the clear reference to the doctrine of reincarnation in our existing scriptures, if we all would follow the path of Asha, there'll be no bad karma created. 
And if there is no bad karma created, there is no need for the souls to reincarnate. However, who lives their life on perfect Asha principle? We all have erred sometimes or other. We may have lied, hurt someone physically or emotionally, or thought wrong thoughts, spoken wrong words, done wrong actions, and other bad habits. Hence, according to the cosmic law, we have to reincarnate to right the wrong we have done. We may choose to stay in the spiritual world to be able to correct some of our mistakes. However, there are some tests, training, and experiences that souls has uh, uh, that soul has to learn and to go through evolve are only possible on earth and that's when the reincarnation reincarnation is a cosmic eternal universal law and there is no exception from it whether we believe there is incarnation or not we all will find out sooner or later when we leave our physical body just because we are Zoroastrians and there is insufficient information on reincarnation in the existing scriptures about rebirth. For the reasons explained in previous slides, whether we like it or not, we believe it or not, we cannot escape from the universal cosmic law of karma. Hence, to be a perfect soul, to achieve the liberation, soul has to reincarnate. So, if anyone is interested to know more on the subject of reincarnation, I recommend reading at least these following three books in the order it is mentioned, and I can provide the PDF version of these books to interested viewers. First, Many Lives, Many Masters by Dr. Brian Weiss, The Journey of Soul, Dr. Michael Newton, and The Laws of Spiritual World by Korshit Bhavanagri. Thank you very much for your participation and patience. The, in the pre presentation of this reincarnation. Thank you. Thank you, Jalbe. Do we have any questions or comments? I have a question. Go yes. ahead, please, Venka. Yes. Yeah, uh, Jalbai, uh, the five stages of soul, can you explain that, please? Uh, the gaze, maybe Sutram being the highest. The, the, there are the, the stage of the soul. Number one is, first of all, the soul initiated in the spiritual world, first of all. Then the, the soul chooses the life to come on the physical world as humans. And either by choice will do some good, do some bad, and on death will go back to the spiritual world. In those spiritual world, the soul will be judged based on the actions taken. And upon, based upon those choices and actions that the soul had made in physical world, uh, that soul will be treated accordingly, whether it will go through the Chinwat bridge or the pass through the test to go into the uh, uh, abode of the happiness or may go to the Hamistagan or will go to the hell or the bad, uh, uh, realm of the spiritual world. And it, during those spiritual, in that realm, the soul has been given an option by the master souls, what we call, or the way evolved souls, which are at their much higher level than average souls, would guide them and give them an options to choose the life again, to right the wrong they have done because some of the actions they have taken can only be corrected in the physical world. And that is when the, that soul by its own choice will decide to reincarnate. Does that answer your question? Hello, Jalankal, uh, before you hey, go to the next one, can you turn off screen sharing from your side? Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Mehriya, 
Vivek yes, sir. Mahesh. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Pandaki, the first part of your talk was very interesting and spot on. You were absolutely right uh, about a lot of things you said early on. Uh, when you came to reincarnation, I have a little problem. And you uh, talked about Tarparola's translation of Yasna 49.11. In that translation, in the translation itself, Tarparola does say, come back to us, come back to the abode of, abode of untruth. However, if you look, and you did uh, reference this page 730 in Taraparwala's translation, and in that analysis or explanation, Taraparwala is, in, is inconsistent. So just let me read, read that to you. So first he says he believes in reincarnation, but then he says, but I must admit that in the Zoroastrian books, both Avasta and Palvi accept it as authentic and authoritative this is a solitary, direct, direct is highlighted, direct reference to reincarnation. Actually, it's on a direct reference where we'll take it for, we'll take his word. In the desert year, which is neither in Avastan nor in Palvi, reincarnation has been specifically mentioned, but the majority of scholars do not admit the, the, the desert year as an authentic Zoroastrian document. And he references uh, uh, Edward, Edward Brown. And I have Edward Brown's book, uh, book also, and I've read it. So I've read the reference that Tara Parola makes. Now, in any case, reincarnation is not, again, he specifies not, is not mentioned so clearly, specifically, and emphatically in Zoroastrian theology, as it is in Hinduism, Buddhism, or Jainism. One main reason for this, it seems, is in my opinion, to be, the, to be this, that the teaching of repeated lives on earth might lead to a relaxing of human effort. Then he goes on to say, the innate inertia of human, human beings would thus hinder spiritual effort. Zarathustra wants, again, this is highlighted, Zarathustra wants man to be alert and active to achieve perfection and immortality, perfectality. And in one verse, Yasna 51.12, 51 he has clearly stated that it is possible to attain this goal within one single life upon earth. Again, one single life upon earth is highlighted. I said that too, yes. Yeah, you did. You did. Yes, you did. Uh, then he, you said about Hayat, Ami, Urvato, or so, the, yeah, you did, did that. So Taraparwala is inconsistent. Now, Taraparwala, actually, the idea of reincarnation really comes from theosophy and Hinduism and Buddhism. Taraparwala was a theosophist. So obviously, he's going to promote theos theosophical ideas. Dasur Dabu, Krishna Dabu, was a theosophist. And he promoted reincarnation. And actually, in... in uh, Dasur Rabu's book, Zarthustra, The Message of Zarthustra, he's, he says reincarnation is a hypothesis. He says, until this is, uh, until this is done, but by this he, mean, he means a better hypothesis is found. And what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is guesswork. It has no evidence. It is just a supposition. Until this is done, to the satisfaction of reason, this doctrine would occupy a prominent place as a sound hypothesis answering all the questions raised by the people who find anomalies and inequalities. Dasru Dhala is absolutely categorical that there's no such thing as reincarnation. In his Saga of a Soul, he says, the philosophy of reincarnation and other principles are the heritage of later Hindu religions, and it is absolutely fruitless to attempt to search for their parallels in Zoroastrianism. I declared that the far-fetched endeavors of Parsi theosophists to attribute those teachings to the Zarasan religion are false and do not reflect sound scholarship. All I had to say to my chairs of his core religion was, was that just as we did not want a Christian Zarasan religion, we did not want either a Hindu Zarasan or a Buddhist Zarasan religion. We needed a pure Zarasan religion, a Mazda Zarasan faith. <laughs> There's a lot more, but I'll say yeah. So, Mr. Rivetna, may, may, may I ask you a question? Yeah. Sure, hey, certainly. Hey sir, Look, sir, we have two points. So, what is you. your concept concept of what happens according to Zoroastrianism to the soul when uh, you are dead? When one okay. one is dead, you, 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 you sort of cover that going to heaven and hell, and I don't think there are, there is any place as heaven in the sky or hell somewhere be, beneath the earth. I don't think there is anything like that. Heaven and hell are uh, states of mind in which actually in the Gata, Zerthus does talk about the state of the mind. He heavenly, uh, heavenly, uh, heaven is a very healthy, positive state of mind, and hell is a very uh, unpleasant, uh, wretched state of life. So that's heaven and hell. What happens after death? 
my personal opinion. I, I have no proof. There's nothing I can, no way I can prove anything to you or anybody. Exactly. I, once the eyes are shut, they're shut. It's all over. Heaven and hell are right here on earth. If you live a good life, you will realize heaven on earth. If you live, live a bad life, uh, and you you uh, pointed out some of the uh, uh, Ill, Ill ideas or ill behaviors, and if you live according to those, you're going to experience a hellish life, a bad life. So, so the uh, when you meant good life, what do you mean by good life? Uh, happiness, harmony. Follow the path of path of Asha. Path of Asha, right? Path of Asha. Yes, absolutely. Who, who absolutely. follows path of Asha? I'm sorry. Who follows path of Asha? Yes, 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 absolutely. Now, right. So uh, now, let me answer it. Go ahead. Go ahead. So nobody follows the path of Asha hundred percent, right? And therefore, therefore. They may err, they may have done something wrong. So in order to reach the uh, complete uh, uh, evolve to uh, almost to be godlike, the soul has to learn a lot of lesson and go through a lot of training and karma. And do you think that in one life that you and I have this life that we are going to achieve that purity of life and so that we become uh, almost godlike. Do you believe that, Mayar? Maria. <laughs> Mayar is a different Maria, name. Sorry, Maria. Maria. Uh, anyway, um, I'm I'm not sure I quite understand what you're saying. But okay, let me let me answer your question in an, in another way. Hey, hey, guys, can I suggest something? This is not a question of debate right now. We don't want to debate issues. Uh, we, we get your point of view, Mayar. Uh, Maria, sorry, you're my friend for. <laughs> Uh, so 65 I think years. there are other there are other questions that we have. Yeah, yeah sure. So let's sure, go yeah. through those first, and then we can later on whoever wants to continue can. Okay. Fair uh, enough. So, uh, Katie and Freddie Mirza from Toronto, please unmute yourself and ask the question. Hi. First of all, Jal, congratulations. A very good research, and I enjoyed your lecture, even though. I have my own questions. The questions that I have really are, are, are very simple and straightforward. In one of your slides, you mentioned Behram Guram Plesaria. And I have his gathas and prologue to his gathas, Behram Guram. So in the prologue to his gathas for Gatha Aunavaiti, Yasna 28, the sixth point at the end of this on page zero, no, seven, he says, as seen in the second stanza of this Ha, which is Aunavaiti, Yes. Uh, according to the Zoroastrian religion, Ahu means existence is of two sorts, Astavato, which is corporeal, and Manangaho, or spiritual. We come across further hints about it in the other Haas as well. It is clearly seen from this that in Zoroastrianism, Zoroastrian religion, there is no belief in more than one earthly existence or in rebirth or regenerate. Re Regeneration, he says. So I'm confused that in this book, he's saying there's only one shot, you don't get a second chance. But somewhere else you read that no, he agrees that there is reincarnation. I'm a little bit confused about that. And the second question I have is in one of your slides, you said that you could be born as, in, as animals, not human beings. Now, my thinking is human beings are the only one who can think. The animals, they work on their natural instinct. It's not really good or bad. They kill for the sake of survival, not for killing somebody. So if they cannot think, their souls basically are pure. They are not doing anything evil. Uh, does that mean that when you become an animal, then you're going straight to heaven or something? Or is it that they cannot think and they cannot improve their soul at all afterwards? Because you know there's no thinking over there. So these are two points if you can address those. Thanks. Can we can we be brief in the answers? I'm sorry. No, I was asking Jalbai to be brief yeah. in his okay. answers. So, actually, such a long word that I even lost the, what the <laughs> questions were. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, so uh, for, let for, me, first first question. Let, let me uh, try. Okay, let me so, try. So first of all, you you mentioned about the Ha Twenty Eight, the Avnavati Gatha, and there are uh, in and and as you saw in some of my slides. Uh, that there were uh, uh, other uh, cars where there is clear mention uh, uh, of the reincarnation or to be born in a, uh, on the earth again. And so there are, and that's why I said the co contradiction and confusion comes in 
because some part of the uh, the uh, gathas says one way and some, some other place it says the other. But like I mentioned in my presentation, that ultimately the, 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 the soul which is created by the Dadara or Ramazda for a purpose. What is the purpose that the God has created? So we, which I also mentioned in my presentation to bring the fresh clarity it, the, because God created the world, the Angra Mainu, the evil uh, destroyed it or uh, made it impure. And so that's why the God has created human beings. So to the uh, total uh, together, we all can, if, you, if only that total humanity will follow the path of Asha is the only time the first character can come in. So yes, I do believe that there are some con uh, con contradictory statements in the book, but I, uh, Chartos, I have wrote it and I didn't write, uh, I didn't write it. I'm just <laughs> quoting from it. <laughs> and it is up to individual, of course, after presentation, like I said, uh, that believe, either to believe that there is incarnation or not believe, depends on what individuals uh, thoughts and belief. Jamshed <coughs> Dastur, please. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for the lovely presentation. So, um, so I've always been, I'm uh, like an engineer, so I always, you know, do math. And so I'm just wondering, so the population of the earth in the last maybe 100 years basically went from a few million to 6 billion so that means are new souls being created or the number of souls are constantly There are a lot of souls who were never born yet. But see, do you believe that God creation is limited? No. No. Okay. Thank you. So there are unlimited uh, creations of souls and not necessarily all have born at the same time. <clears throat> Then what happens is some of the souls they were born uh, reincarnate with, depending on their karmas, and some new souls have taken a birth also, uh, and so that's when the population growth that you see, because of unlimited source of unborn souls in the spirit world, and that's why I would strongly recommend you to read those books because that will give you a lot of information. Okay. I have one more question. Do you believe reincarnation is because we have to learn or because we have to suffer or pay our dues for what we did in our past life? Because if I don't remember what I've done in my past life and I'm suffering for some reason, I don't know what, how do I learn? Right. How do I learn what I'm suffering for if right. I don't so, or I'm just, is it just your punishment? I, I understand your question. I understand your question. What you're saying is for whatever the difficulties you are facing in your life present, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, because of your past life, if you believe in the reincarnation, of course, uh, and you said, but my memory is erased and I, I don't remember. So how would I correct? So my question to you is if you were writing your engineering exam and if you knew the paper already, would it be a real test to you? Do you understand my answer? Yes, but I know. Okay, so in other words, the realm of what? In other words, let's say I murdered somebody last life. So in this life, if I knew I'm not going to, mur I should not murder somebody or pay the whatever sufferings I pass <clears throat> to that particular individual, then there is no test left anymore. So that's why our memory is erased. Only the, the, when the child is born up to the child start to speak, they are in communication with the spiritual world. And they, but after the moment they speak, the memory is erased for the purpose so that you can then correct your mistakes. That's my answer. Okay, Thank I am Arsad. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jal, for the excellent research that you have done and presented on the concepts. The only point that I want to make is Tarapurwala, in my knowledge, my limited knowledge, 
is the only one who has translated that one word out of the entire gathas, your whole premises is resting just on that one word of one ha, which then later on gets contradicted anyhow by Taraparwala, that this thing is not possible. And it is Zarathustra's wish that in one life, everything can be achieved. So we are, we're, we are, we are just um, sort of arguing for the sake of arguing on this one word. If you look at all the other translations of that same ha, uh, either by uh, Insler, by Duchess Gilliman, by Moulton, by Bowden Nanawati, by Jaffrey, by Setna, even uh, including uh, if you go with our uh, Yasna Bamayani, nowhere has any of the responsible scholars translated that word as returning back. It just says it attains. So, no, so it I, attains. So, so what I'm what, saying is we can continue the discussion, but to me, it seems that you have been heavily influenced just like Dastuji Dabu and others on the Hindu philosophy. The other point that I want to make is if it was universal and it should be whatever some concept like that, that Christianity doesn't believe it. No other major religion accepts it, except those who have been influenced by Hinduism. So, so then according to you, what happens to us once, once we pass from here? Okay. What happens to the soul? You, you, first yes. of all, you believe Nobody that we have a soul. Knows. Nobody yes. knows. Yes, let me answer that. Yeah. I believe that we have a soul and the soul was given this chance to improve itself. Granted that it didn't follow the complete uh, course as it was supposed to. So now the soul passes on, it judges itself and accordingly, it gets the, the heaven and hell, in my mind, conditions that the soul will experience. That's correct. Absolutely. And, and if we have lived a good life, then we will have flashbacks of all the good things that we have done. And that will be the reward. That will be the ultimate reward that we will get. If we have not done something good, then the soul will repent itself. It will keep repenting until it realizes that it has done something bad and then that should not have been done. And at that point, it will stop experiencing the condition of hell and convert itself to start experiencing the condition of heaven. So that is my understanding. The, this was the teaching that was given to us by Dastuji Menocher Homji in the 80s. Uh, I'm not a scholar, but that is what we <laughs> were taught. And, and so to me, it seems that the argument can be made either way or not, just by reading books. But if we were to depend on the gathas, in all those chapters of gathas, why would there be only one, one word in one paragraph that would lead you astray. So That's unfortunately, yes, we only have this gatha to follow because like I mentioned in my almost last slides that the why there is no direct mention uh, in our religion is because we have lost almost almost all of our literature. Uh, and and I'm, I've, I'm almost sure that somewhere in some of those lost literature, there might have been a reference and so we are now hanging on to only what we have. And now we are, uh, I, you and I, and we are arguing uh, on the translation of those words. But that is the only uh, information that we are going by. And we don't have the information that we had. So it's, it's, like, it's like- Hey, Kayamar, sorry, sorry guys. Uh, we have three more questions that yeah. we'd like to get answered. It's been okay, 10 minutes sorry. past the hour. So oh, yeah. Kayomar and Mehriar have similar points of view, I can tell. Um, if I'm not wrong, I'm not putting words in 
either of yeah. them out, but we get the point of view. So Thank we you. have a one and another point of view, okay? How about Dali Dastu, please? Thank you very much for a very controversial and thought-provoking presentation. I'm not going to quote any scholars because I don't know any of them. But I have an empirical question for you. If we have soul is here or we are here on this earth to, to redeem our past present past life, if you say so, then how come, what is the reasoning if somebody dies within one month, one year of his birth and one somebody dies at 100 years of his birth, how does it, how do they have the time to redeem themselves? Okay. How so does that happen? I understand your question, Dali. So you see, uh, in, in one of my slides, I mentioned that the soul, we choose the kind of like same way, like it was mentioned that one is in, uh, in a royal family, the other is on a slum. One is uh, live hundred years, and like you said, one dies when is all those challenges of the of the karma that particular soul has choice. So if that child who just came and died very early had only so much karma left to clear, so it came, it chose, and also that is a part of also the karma of the parents because the pain that that parents would go through for the loss of their young child. So it's a combination of, because we are, we are also called as group souls. Uh, like, see, that's why uh, some of the things it's difficult for us to understand is because of the lack of information available and that's why I'm referring to those other books that uh, all those psychologists and doctors and psychiatrists have put, done by the experimentation as and all, provided the information. Uh, and, and, and I keep repeating myself, but because I keep saying that the information has lost, there is nothing to follow by except these gathas that we are following. And, and, and so naturally, we don't find all the answers that we're looking for, darling. Hey, yeah, we have uh, three more questions, but I also, since we have two NAMC scholars, maybe they can also opine. Uh, we have Dr. John Bugley and Edward Pantaki, and uh, maybe they can give an opinion at the end uh, if you have a different point of view. Uh, Jehan, would you like to say a few words on this topic? Yes, um, I, have a, I have a comment. Basically, uh, Jal mentioned through the seminar that the reincarnation is clearly focused towards the evolution of the soul to perfection. That's right. Clearly, Zarathustra has outlined in the Amesha Spenta to reach Amaritat. Amaritat is deathlessness. No life of a human being on this earth reaches deathlessness. Absolutely. And that clearly suggests that one life is not enough to reach absolute perfection. Uh, by, by absolute perfection, I mean the perfection of Ahura Mazda, the perfection of absolute wisdom. And therefore, there has to be a, a, a second phase somewhere for their soul to evolve. Now, the, there is perhaps some fallacy in the fact that we always say that the soul reincarnation is coming back to earth. It may be in another reality. It may not be in the earth. It may be somewhere else that the soul will uh, evolve to perfection. So I think that that is something that we need to understand that whereas the reincarnation as a concept is cosmic in its uh, nature, I think we have to realize that it is not always coming back to earth, but soul can evolve at uh, some other reality. So that is the comment I have to make. Thank you, Jal. Other than that, I think they, it was an excellent seminar, Jal. Thank and you, I appreciate. congratulate you on the same. Thank you, John. Nilofar, Jamsedi. Hello. 
Jal uncle, thank you very much for the presentation. Unfortunately, I missed half of the presentation since I was driving. I don't know if you covered this or not. Uh, I just want to know what's your point of view uh, where, if we are born again? Are we born in our own religion or different religion? I don't know if this topic was covered, the dimension or not. So <clears throat> what, what is your point of view? Uh -huh. <laughs> according, to, according to my information <laughs> that I have researched, the religion, there is no religion actually in the spiritual world. The religion's only here in the earth. And when the soul chooses from the spiritual world to come to the physical world, depending on the lessons that the soul wants to learn, depending on the experiences and so on to learn, will choose the parents. And as to and the place to be born so in order to face those challenges so the religion it doesn't matter you could be born in one religion be born in another according okay to. thank you very much uh, Gita Gita yes thank you so much uh, excellent um, presentation I'm very grateful for your teaching it was so much that I probably couldn't um learn everything that you have said but i have i'm learning that if you share your belief you get definitely attacked so um i'm just I'm gonna put myself um stop my video because i want to go back to my notes so i can ask you some question um if i may um i want to talk about duality and the question is basically on duality um when i um think uh to myself and in reality, when I'm thinking, um, I have a good thoughts and I have bad thoughts. And, and when I'm thinking about myself, my success, my money, my home, my country, um, usually I suffer. And the suffering is that I'm fearful, I'm greedy, or I'm angry. But what I'm learned from all, all of you, especially you yourself and all the Zoroastrians, worldwide, they think about others. That's very interesting for me. They're out there helping others without thinking about themselves. They're saying things not to hurt others, even though that what they're saying, it hurt them, but they're still not going to hurt other people. That is the quality of ultimate selflessness. And that quality of Zoroastrians being selfless, I don't see any duality in there. There is no, it's only Gita has the duality. It's only me thinking about me, but you don't. And, and if, if you really believe that duality exists, then, then you should believe in life and death like I do. I, am, I came to this world and then I'm going to die. That's the opposite of, of life. But if you really honestly, Zoroastrians, as, 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 as not I am, I mean, I, I was born into it, but, but as you are, do you really believe that you lose this body and, and, but the life continues? Or as you lose this body and you think like me, duality, life ends, and that's it. So what is really you mean about duality? Because I don't see any duality in the words and actions of the Zoroastrians. Thank you. It's the law of nature. Uh, nothing will exist itself. Like just to give you a simple example, uh, it, to keep the balance in the universe, the opposing forces have to be there. And to give you a simple example, if you take a bar magnet, which is a straight bar magnet, which is a North Pole and a South Pole. And if you cut that, uh, which in the center, there is no magnetism. Uh, like if you can put it still there, it will not attract, but on towards the end it does. So if you cut that magnet in half, do you know that now you will have two magnets with North Pole and South Pole? Because let's say you separated the North and the South by cutting, the south and the north by itself will not exist. And that piece of two pieces of magnet uh, that you, you cut in half will become two magnets containing opposite force, north and south, because it's a law of nature that opposing forces have to be there for the balance. Same thing for I, atom, I, neutron, I proton, and so on. So, so, so you're addressing the forces, not the duality itself. 
Yes, and that same thing applies. Excellent. Thing applies to the soul and the spiritual. Thank you so much. Excellent. Tarish, Tarishma or Jaru, or both. Thank you very much, Arda Sahib. Pantaki Sahib, thank you for a very brilliant lecture and gratitude to the NAMC for putting up both the lecture and the discussion. My only comment is that the NAMC has also put up the recordings from Dasturji Sahib Minocharamji, Ndi Minocharamji, on the NAMC website from 1981. And in this, Dasturji Sahib has commented on the concept of both karma and the Vangeosh Vatush Manango, the web of wisdom is too profound for my finite intelligence, he says. And if I care for the lessons of the present, automatically I will go to the future. And he interprets Asho Zarathustra there. So with gratitude to the NAMC and to the Minocheramjis and to Bami Damkewale Sahib, I'd like to guide people also to listen to the original voice of Dasturji, Endi Minocheramji, where he discusses some of these aspects further. And thank you, Jal Sahib. Profound gratitude. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jal Sahib, can I ask you one uh, dumb question? There is so, no dumb question. If you no, ask me a dumb question, I'll give you a dumb answer. That's okay. <laughs> uh, it deserves it. Cute. So, so, can one assume that President Putin must have done great things in his past life to not only become the president of a great country and stay in a palace, but now if he believes that he can kill all these people and come back in the next life and redeem himself, then why would he stop? Because he has a chance to redeem himself. I, it's just, I, I'm trying to philosophize that. Well, uh, okay. So let's say uh, someone like right now, what Putin is doing, for example, uh, which killing so many people, this is totally bad karma. Now his soul definitely is going to suffer. His soul, once it leaves this body and goes into the spiritual world, uh, to redeem the wrong that he has done, will take maybe many, 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 many lives, in my opinion, for, for, because uh, the atrocities, so, so many uh, thousands of pe souls that he has killed, the, to redeem that will take that many generations for him or lifetime to redeem it. But ultimately, the all souls, according to, again, the Zoroastrianism and Prussian charity, ultimately the evil will be destroyed. And uh, all the uh, good souls, the earth will become now pure and the Prussian charity will come. Thank you so much. Very interesting discussion. And as you know, it's a very controversial topic. So we sincerely appreciate your taking the time to be on the call. Thanks again, Jal Sahib. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jal. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank, you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jal Uncle. Thank you. Okay.